Let's take a look at this working so you can help yourself. Now, Proverbs is chock full of, of, of labor, of, of things that are profitable. And, uh, and when I read through Proverbs, I find a lot of things about work. Solomon, who penned down the Psalms, was a worker. I mean, he was a magnificent worker. You probably couldn't find a harder worker than Solomon in that day. So he wrote down some Proverbs, and several of the things he said, well, all of them have, have awesome validity and strength to this idea of working. But work so you can help yourself. He starts out by saying this in Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. And that is to say that if you want to help yourself, you need to work. And you need to work hard. The hand of the diligent, that's somebody who is actually going to get out there and plow the field. Now let me just say this. As we talk about work, there are two types of workers. There are the workers, and then there are the workers. <laughs> and anybody who's a worker understands what I mean by that. There are the people that go to work and get a paycheck and don't actually work hard. And then there are the ones that will outperform anybody else. Y'all know those workers, right? Hopefully. Y'all know those workers that can, that can work other people's, I mean, under the table. They're just so hard workers. That's the diligent that he's referring to here in Proverbs 12. The hand of the diligent, they're the ones that are bearing rule. They're the ones who are the leaders. They're the ones who are the employers. They're the boss. They're the ones at the top of the food chain because they get out there and they get the job done. But the slothful, now that's a group that shall be under tribute. Those are the employees. Those are the ones that are less, maybe less diligent. They're less risky. You know, there's a risk reward. The people who are at the top, those are the diligent ones. They're the ones who are the leaders. And we ask ourselves why, we ask ourselves the question, why are those people in authority. Why are those that are in authority in authority? Because they are diligent workers. Those are the workers. They're the group of workers that are the workers of the workers. You all know what I mean. The people who get up early and stay up late, they work extra hard. Now this doesn't mean that the hard workers are, ne are, are, are less of people, or the, that the, the, those that aren't as hard workers are less of people, it just simply means that the workers, the ones that are really aggressive and the diligent, those are the ones that are going to bear rule. Those are the ones at the top. The purpose of work is that, you can, that it provides you a place of leadership. Provides you a place of leadership. Number one. Number two. The purpose of work is that it satisfies your desires. It satisfies your your desires. Proverbs 13 says, The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing. Now let me tell you this. We all have desires. The diligent and the sluggard both have desires. But there's a difference between the two. The difference is, is that the soul of the diligent is going to be made fat. The soul of the slothful, the sluggard here, the sluggard, the slothford, the, a great waster, they're all kind of in the same category. The soul of the sluggard desires, but they don't have what it is they want because they're not diligent workers. Now there's a couple of reasons, prim primarily because you're, you don't work hard, but also because I think God has a, has a real uh, blessing in this. Those that work hard, I think it pleases God, and they're blessed of God financially. And therefore, they purchase those things which they desire because they work hard. We have to say, those people who are out there working hard have what it is they want because they're hardworking. Working is God's plan for us, and the purpose of work is that you can help yourself, primarily by uh, putting you in a place of leadership and also giving you what you desire. Another purpose of the work is uh, for yourself is that, uh, is that there is profit. There's profit. And he says here in Proverbs 14, in all labor there is profit. All labor there's profit. In all work, there is something to be gained. There's value. But the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. 
Penury is poverty. So you all know those people, right, who, who work hard and don't talk, and then we know the people who just talk, and they, they, kind of, they, lean on their, they lean on the shovel, you know, as opposed to move the shovel. Now, I can move a shovel and talk, and I think a lot of us in this room, I mean, I don't think I'm talking to a bunch of sloth or sluggards. I mean that. Truly, I mean that. What I'm telling you is that there's a great populace of Christians out there who, who do more leaning than they do digging. You all know what I mean. And when we work hard, there is a reward. There is a reward. Now, I've told people this. I said, people don't realize that poverty comes because people talk. Poverty comes because people don't properly uh, uh, um, allocate their time. And I've told my staff this. I said, 10 minutes. 10 minutes a day wasted is 60 hours a year. That's a, that's a work week. That's a work week. 60 hours a year, 10 minutes a day. If, if we do the talking and we don't do the moving, if we're not active, I mean, what can you accomplish in 60 hours of labor, of working diligently? What can you accomplish in 60 hours? Potentially a whole lot. And if you get paid 20 bucks an hour, you're going to buy yourself a new grill. You're going to buy yourself a new lawnmower, a couple lawn chairs, a fishing pole. And uh, I mean, you're going, to find, you're going to buy yourself some things, right? Because you've worked hard. And that's a good thing. Working hard is very, very important. But only talking leads, leads to poverty. So 10 minutes a day of wasted time is 60 hours a year. And you all know that you waste more than 10 minutes a day, right? We all waste more than 10 minutes a day. I don't know. I look at my weather app more than 10 minutes a day. Okay? We waste a lot of time. How many of you spend three to seven hours on Facebook? Don't, don't raise your hand. I'm only kidding. We waste a lot of time, bottom line. We waste a lot of time. And the purpose of work is that there is profit. Another purpose of work for yourself is that it can be just very simply just to eat. I know it sounds really basic, doesn't it? But the Bible says this. It says it in 2 Thessalonians 3.10. It says, For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. If you don't work, you don't eat. Now, that's a biblical principle. Does that sound tough? No, it sounds biblical. Now, what's great, what's great is that the context of this verse, the context of that verse actually goes back a few verses, verse 6. And what makes the context even stronger and the content even that more impactful, he goes back to verse 6 and he says this, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the tradition which ye have received of us. Do you know what the disorderly brother in this context was referring to? One that did not work. Here's the, here's the setting. In the church of Thessalonica, there were people who forsook their work and wanted to join the ministry because they thought the Lord was going to return that night. So they said, you know what? I'm not going to work. I'm just going to be involved in the ministry. And so what ended up happening is those people in the ministry began to be a burden to the other people. See, they took it too far and they began not to work. And then they began to be a burden on the other people who were the workers. And he says that those people are the disorderly ones. And he says to withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh dis disorderly. Any person who's not working, he says, get away from the lazy people. Get away from the sluggards and the sloth. Don't be, don't be with them. Why would he say that? Here's why he said that. He said, you don't want to be associated with them lest other people think that you condone their behavior. Don't be affiliated or associated with people who don't want to work. Friends, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. Christian workers ought to be the best workers in the world. Christian workers ought to be the pace setters. We ought to be the ones that the world looks up to. We ought to be the ones that they say, that guy right there, he knows how to work. And so oftentimes, it's not that way. So oftentimes, people look at the Christian and say, that guy is no harder worker than, than the other guy. 
And here he's saying, get away from those people who don't know how to work. Because other people are going to think that you agree with that sort of behavior. And the bottom line, he says, if you don't work, you don't eat. Stay away from idleness. This is unacceptable behavior. God has created us to work. He has created us to work, and you know what? That helps ourselves. It really does help us. Mm -hmm. 